almost definitely with our team. But we're going to drop a little bit more, and we're going to stay up in two. Now, our guys can stay up in two. Once, game, once the season starts, they can stay up in two as much as they want. As long as they are not consistent in staying up in two. What I mean by that is, just because it's a pass or a draw, they're up in two. No, they're going to be up in two-point stands on run plays. They'll be down in three-point stands on a pass play. They'll be down in three-point stands on third and 13. Well, you know we're passing. Everybody knows we're passing. Anybody that's ever scouted us knows we're passing. Well, I'm down, he'll get down in his stance just to throw that defensive lineman off. Make him think. Those guys can't think they're on the other side of the ball. We've got the 1,000 SATs. They have the 701 SATs. They're barely eligible. They can't think on the other side of the ball. So we make them think. Okay? A couple of years ago, I saw a Coach Riley, and he talks about big chest, big eyes. We want to get that lockout position. We want to get the big chest, the big eye. We want to lock in there, get the head tilted slightly back, get the hands in there. Okay. One of the problems we found with them doing big chest, big eyes was they did this. So they're bent over. They're in the worst power angles in America. There are angles there that I didn't even know existed on the human body. So we got those big old fat guys like me. Advantages to being fat. You tell them, keep your bellies out. Bellies out. Big chest, big eyes, get your belly out. Now you've got that arch in the back. Now you can get yourself into good position because you have your big chest, you have your big eyes, and you got your belly out there. Be proud of that thing. That's really something worth being proud of. You've worked a lot of years on that. I know. <laughs> use all this as a base to teach other techniques. The guards will change their balance stance to become a little more unbalanced sometimes. The tackles will always change their stance depending on the angle of the player. Okay? Some of the things that we really like to do, we really like to go and jump them on occasion. Let's jump them, we're going to run block them. We're going to get in there, we're going to run block that son of a bitch. We're going to drop that foot, we're going to take a drop step and get after him. Get right into him, get into his face, let him think that it's a run, and now we start our pass block. You do that a couple times to a defense man, you do that a couple times to a down tackle, and he's thinking run, pass, he doesn't know. Again, he can't think, he's got the 701 SAT. Now, what we'll do is we'll change up on that, and we'll fake jump them. We'll take our drop step, we'll go after them, and then we'll sit back in a good passive position. You've never seen a defense man freeze like you see a guy freeze like that. They start in, they think and run, they're going to throw, you start backwards, they, they actually take a step back. I've seen it, I've seen it on film. They take a half a step back. Okay, so we fake jump them. We do a lot of things with our hands. Hand play is real important to us because we're not that strong. We want to keep their hands off us. We're going to do karate. We, we actually have a guy that teaches at the college who is a second, third degree black belt. He actually comes down and in the off season, he works with our offensive linemen on blocks. That's all he does. Works with them on blocks. We don't care if they can throw a punch. We don't care if they can throw a karate punch. But we do, we do want them to be able to block that guy. We want them to see it, block that arm. Keep the arm off you. Guy gets his arm on you, get him off. Get him off. Get him off upward. Get him off down. We don't care. Just get him off. Don't let him get his hands on you. He gets his hands on you, he can pick you. We don't want to get picked. Okay? On that similar vein, we do something called present arms. We're going to sit in there, we're going to show the arms like this. Go ahead, hit the son of bitches, hit them, knock them down. Because we're going to take them away, like you know, did last night in the film. We're going to take them away, and we're going to stick half a step back, and you're going to fall flat on your face because you're concentrating on knocking our arms down. 
It's not going to happen. We're going to sit there, we're going to present arms, take them down, and then kick back a little bit, and then we're going to attack you. Now we're going to jump you again. We're going to take care of you because we're smarter than you. Okay? What are the keys to effective pass protection? One, you got to know your personnel. What can your players do? How can they move? You've got to call your protections according to that. Two, know the weakness of your protection. Every protection has some kind of weakness. Every single protection, whether it's a dual reef for the guard, a dual reef for the back, whatever your protection is, know the weakness in your protection and coach the hell out of that. Anticipate personnel problems. You got a little guard over here, like we did this year when we played Wagner. We had a little guard that was six foot, 218 pounds going against this kid Snell. This kid Snell is big, he's good, and he's the strongest kid we played in our league. He, he's humongous. Snell didn't have one sack against us though. Because we knew that if Snell was going to attack every time on our guard, we were going to be in trouble. So when our center was on cover, we stepped them in there. We stepped them in there. We knew our personnel, we knew their personnel. We're gonna step them in there and we're gonna get help as much as possible. We drew the backs and the line together because the backs are nothing but linemen for us. Those guys, they get the ball every now and then, but they're linemen. I got films on here that, that'll show you those guys got a block. So we drew the backs and the line together all the time. Know your opponent's personnel. Same thing as knowing your personnel. Know your opponent's schemes. Do they like TE twist? They like TT twist. Know what they like to do. What is their favorite thing? Know it by film. Okay? Know your opponent's favorite pass rush technique. Is he a swim guy? Is he a rip guy? Does he just bully you every time? If he just bulls you every time, you can do a lot of things to him. You can cut him a lot. But if he's a swim guy or a rip guy, you got to start doing things to counter that. Okay? Number nine, which is not on that sheet, you got to have the ability to change your protections at the line of scrimmage. We have the ability through our center. Some teams do it through the quarterback. It doesn't matter. Our centers are smart. Our centers are good. We coach the hell out of our centers, and we make them make the adjustments on the line of scrimmage. They will call the protection at the line of scrimmage using all sorts of codes, okay? It also helps that we only play in front of about 2,000 people so that our back can hear what our center says. Hell, I can hear what our center says over on the sideline because there's nobody in the stands cheering for us. <laughs> this is not Michigan. We don't have 105,000 people out there, okay? Some of our protections. This is the base protection that people use when they're a run shoot team. Center has zero. Can you see that okay? Center has zero, which is the backside linebacker. Now this is for any of our, our plays that are going to the right. Almost everything I'm gonna do here is plays going to the right. Okay, center has zero. Guard would have one on the back side. Back side tackle has two. Front side guard has one. Front side tackle has two. Back has number three. So that linebacker shoots that gap. Back has the linebacker coming through. Okay? That's real nice when it looks in that one. That's real nice when it's in the 50. Okay? You got the center on zero. You've got the guard on the back. Guard on the back, three man out. This is what run shooting people will tell you. Don't come, those linebackers don't come. You're three man out. You can start helping everywhere else. Tackles have number two. Uh, running back has number three. Number seven, the quarterback's responsible for. Well, number seven is coming to a very short corner, and he's really fast, Lawrence Taylor type. He's going to get to the quarterback before he gets the ball off. And this is what worried us. So we don't do a whole lot of man protection. We do a little bit of it, but we don't do a whole lot of man protection. 
We have about 17 different protections. Many of them are pro-style protections. And I'll, I'll show you the main reason why we had to go away from man protection. Right down here, the one on the right. to take the number two man. This guard's got to take the number one. He's got to step in hard to A gap. If he isn't coming, then he's got to try and mow it back out. The shit, that's a real hard job for him. That's a really impossible job for him with the quarterback rolling that way. Our guys can't do it. They're not good enough. So we had to go away from man protection. So we had to go to a lot of other different types of protections. is a protect protection. We use this quite often. We're going to help Senator no uh, Gorton. He's going to check linebacker on the play side. He's going to check linebacker, help down on the nose. Backside guard's going to check linebacker. He's going to kick out of Molly. We got our two tackles, big on big. That's what Bob is, big on big. We can do that to the right. We can do that to the left. Then we use slide protection, which is something that we use probably about 60% of the time now. We will slide the protection one way or the other. Now, we like to slide to the reduction when there's a reduction. That's where we like to slide. Sometimes we can't because the running back is going towards the side of the reduction. Uh, the running back is going away from the reduction. We can't slide to it. So we've got to get ourselves into a different type of protection. That's when the center will make a call. And it'll change out of slide protection. Okay? We have pull protections. Center's going to go back side. Center's going back side. We're going to say solid on the front side. We're going to pull, he's going to check, see if there's a linebacker coming. He's going to pull out here, he's going to check, see if someone's coming off the corner. Then he's going to look back side. He's on an island. We don't like this protection a whole lot, except against certain fronts where certain people are a little bit slower. We will use this to get out, to get our quarterback out a little bit more because he likes to run. He's a freelance kid, he's a little bit on the crazy side. Uh, we were playing St. John's this year, last game of the season for the MAC championship. We're undefeated in the conference. By the way, the MAC conference, the symbol for the MAC conference should be a basketball player dribbling down a football field because it's a complete basketball conference. Uh, so Georgetown, St. John's, all those Big East basketball teams, they play football on occasion, and this is who we have to play. Well, against St. John's, we've, I walk out of the locker room, I look, I see these feet dangling from five, seven feet in the air. <clears throat> he's pulled himself up on the rafters, and he's going to lay down on the rafters. He's a little bit on the nutty side. This is what you have to deal with when you're going to deal with a quarterback that can throw the ball. He's a little bit loose. He's a little bit crazy. So we're a little bit like the Raiders. We use a fan protection. We will never mile away from the fan. This is what... Coach Riley put it to my head about five years ago, we will never mount away from the fan. We will stay in some protection on the back side. We may fan the front side. We might fan the back side, depending on what we have with our personnel and their personnel. That's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to gate protect. We're going to man zone protect. These are all different protections that we use.